I want to present a group of people that I know uh, to you, and they're called the wolves. Now, one of those wolves is myself, right here. Back in August 2019, I went to the Boy Scouts National Youth Leadership Training. For a week, with people that I had never met before, I um, did different competitions as part of a team. And as a team, we had to work together, we had to build, we had to use different skills. And the goal was to teach us to be leaders and to really create bonds and organize ourselves when we had never worked with these people before. Now, I want you to look at these people and for a second think, which one is the leader of this team? Is it myself in the middle with the flag? Is it the guy right in the back who's kind of looking over the team? Or is it this guy right here who looks the most comfortable, or these two girls? In reality, there was no one leader, because leadership is a lot more than just one person making decisions for an entire group. Every one of us, at different moments, were leaders. And this is kind of what I want to talk about to you, talk to you about today. I believe that everyone should be a leader. Being a leader is, like I said, a lot more than a decision making. It means participating. It means taking initiative. Being a leader is not bossing people around. It's teaching. It's a lot of different things. But this could kind of change your definition. So let's really talk about leaders. So when I say leader, I don't mean the president. I don't mean, I do, well, you can be president, but I don't just mean being presidents, being, you know, generals. Leaders can be found in our everyday community. They can be our teachers. They can be our basketball coaches. They can be our team captains. Leaders can also be our parents. If you are out on a hiking trip or somewhere, someone's going to have to lead that trip, and that's your parent. Leaders are found everywhere in our everyday lives. Even if it's in a school project, there's going to be a leader. So a leader, our definition of leader, really needs to expand beyond just thinking of your one project manager at work. A leader can be many different people. Now this is going to change our idea of what leadership is. Now, leadership is often seen as basically making decisions. It's the one person you go and you say, okay boss, what's the plan? And then that person sends you off to do something, you fail at it and you get yelled at. But we need to kind of look at our definition of leadership as a bit more like in a broader sense. This is why this weekend, while preparing for this last minute, I decided to create an acronym, KEGS. It's a C, but it's KEGS. KEGS is uh, basically what leadership is more than just giving directions. KEGS is communicating, it's educating, it's guiding, and it's serving. So now let's talk about each one of these things in detail, and I will want to kind of express what I myself learned at NYLT, National Youth Leadership Training, in this moment. Let's talk about communicating. Being a leader is getting people to understand. For an example, as an example, at the end of this NYLT course, there was a major problem. There was a storm, and we needed to get 50 boys into one tent, one major tent, without any notice. And it was going wrong, because people were not telling these people what is the problem and what we have to get done. As a leader, we don't want to just say, you need to go do this, you need to go do that. You want to explain to the person why. Everyone will do something. Uh, people will do things, but they won't necessarily do it to the best of their abilities if they don't know why. When this storm happened, when they told me to go up and talk to these people, I had to explain why we were all getting into a tent when we should have been going off and kind of tent camping in the wilderness. Really important to be why. So a leader is someone, first of all, who explains. But a leader is also someone who listens. A lot of us have had this case where, I'm same for adults as for kids, where you're in a project and the boss is telling you what to do, and you are not being listened to. You are the one who has a good idea, but they don't want to listen to you. And although some adults may understand that, and some of you are leaders, you may already implement that, it's really important for us as the future leaders to remember, listening is part of communicating. Communication is a sender, a message, and a listener. So listening as a leader is really important in communicating. Uh, finally, Informing, communicating also really takes in um, this idea of informing. And that's when we come in with educating. A leader is not just someone who says, I want you to do this, and then judges how you've done it. Oftentimes, people may say, I want you, for example, to set up this project. Let's say if someone had said, 
Um, for example, in the case of this, they said, I want you to go set up the lights, but you didn't know how to set the lights. A leader needs to be at just as much as a teacher as they are a leader. And that's kind of where in Scouts, in NYLT, we use this other acronym called EDGE, the EDGE method. Some of you Scouts in the audience may already know this. EDGE is a simple four-step method. Explain. First of all, a leader needs to explain what they're going to do. Now, of course, the president is not going to explain how to write a bill or something to someone. But as leaders in our everyday life, we've got to explain what our view of the situation is and how we want them to get it done. If you want the lights to be done and you want them in a certain way, you're going to say, I want this to be done in this way. And you've got to explain the idea and how they do it. Now, if you're a leader, this can vary. But if you're a leader and you know that this person isn't doing as well, you could demonstrate, which is demonstrate one of the ways you want something to be done for them to then and be able to do the project, guide them through the next steps, and then enable. Being a leader is also helping to make people autonomous. It's if you are in charge of a project, you want them to be able to do something. And being a leader is also helping your team through and helping them through what they're doing. Let's now go to guiding. Being a leader is doesn't mean you get to sit behind the desk and say, do this, do that, and not do anything. Being a leader means you're at the forefront of the action. A boss doesn't always equal a leader. I know we often have this idea that the boss, our boss, whether it's people in the business world or whether it's on TV, the boss is the leader. But a boss, someone who sits behind a desk and who says to you, go do this, go do that, is not a leader. A leader is someone who's at the forefront of the action. A great image that I found online was this idea that there are a group of people who need to pull a very heavy weight. The boss will stand by and say, pull the weight. The leader will get to the front and pull the weight with you. It's really important that in our everyday life, and we see this even if we look at old, um, we see this in many cases, and I'll actually give an example after, but that we as leaders are giving the example and going forefront. We've often seen in cases in old movies of World War I where the general's in the back and they're not, and we always kind of value the person, the lieutenant who's at the front leading the charge. This is what a leader needs to do. They need to guide right, and lead the charge. Leading also means, in guiding, leading by example. A lot of people are disappointed when the leader says, do what I say, not what I do. We as leaders, and this applies to all of us in our everyday life, whether it's for kids, whether it's for adults, we need to show what we want done, and we need to lead by example. And what's really important in that is self-leadership. It means getting to places on time. It means being able to regulate yourself. It means that you as a person are able to lead yourself. It means that if you want people to answer emails or you want them to answer texts or you want them to do things, you yourself need to be able to be your own self-leader. The final part is serving. Now, this is a word I learned at Scouts. And I honestly, I've, I, like, I loved it the first time, moment I saw it. It's servant leadership. A lot of people think being the leader is being the king. People are there to serve you. If you're the leader and you want a glass of water, you're the leader. You should get that glass of water. If you're the one who's in charge, you know, if you're the president, then people are there to help you and get you. But that's not what reality is. If we really want to change things, if you want to show what you believe is bad leaders, what being a real leader is, you need to remember that being leader, above all, is being a servant. You are serving your team. You are serving the people that you are trying to lead. You are basically the one who has to be the best follower of all. Because in the end, they're not there for your success, for your fame. They're there for the group. And you are there for the group. If you step up to be a leader of a group, don't expect to be the one to get the most credit. Don't say, I'm going to step up, because in the end, my, I want my name to be first. You're stepping up. You're being a leader because you want the group to succeed. And in the end, you may do a bit more work, but you are serving the group. Servant leadership is extremely important, and we don't always keep that in mind. Serving also talks about responsibility. Responsibility to a group, responsibility to a community, responsibility to oneself. So being able, like I said earlier, setting a good example, but also when you're serving, you're also making sure that the rest of the people are you're being taken care of. We forget a lot now in these days that we think a lot about ourselves. But when you step up to be a leader, you step up to be taking care of others. You step up for your duties. You step up because you are helping a community. 
when you are being in charge, you got to know that as a leader, it's your fault if something technically goes wrong, and you need to take that responsibility. And in the end, the safety or the well-being of your group depends on you. So when you go step up, be a leader. Take responsibility. Finally, the leader passes on the torch. We all hate when the one person has been the boss for years and years. When I was uh, t um, the leader of my scout troop, I stepped down after two election terms because a leader needs to train the people who are going on. And they need to make sure that their team, once they're gone, is autonomous. So I'm going to go back to this group. In the end, every one of us was leader, were leaders. And you may say, how can there be several leaders? It's not like there's one, two, three presidents. In the reality, we're all specialized in what we do, whether it's cooking, whether it's not tying, whether it's doing things. We all kind of can be leaders at different moments. When I say leader, I don't mean you have the position that says leader. Leader means is a lot more. It's like a mindset. Being a leader in your community means that at any point, for example, in this camp out, we are leaders by stepping up at different moments, taking responsibility, guiding, explaining, using our skill sets to get our group to move forward. So what I really want you to kind of remember for this, from this is, first of all, who can be a leader? Anyone can be a leader. Now, it's not always possible to be the project manager or the manager of a store or the CEO of a company. But this goes beyond just name tags. This goes to the idea that in our community, leaders are people that inspire, there are people who work, there are people who guide, and there are people who can be found anywhere. Leadership is not a permanent thing. It's something that you go in and out of. Why should you be a leader? And this is where I'm going to tie it in with the idea of the revolutions and stuff. We need people who inspire. We're in a society where, you know, maybe you don't know, where people are, um, we kind of feel sometimes that we've lost this sense of responsibility towards others, or we could get frustrated. And ultimately, why you should be a leader is because everyone in us has the power to inspire, to teach, to pass on ideas, to pass on um, good ideas, to pass on skills. If you can be a leader, if you can step up, and that don't just mean for us kids, for us students, step up in the classroom, but it could also mean step up in our civic leadership, whether it's running for different positions, because ultimately democracy means the people are the ones in charge. It could mean uh, stepping up as a leader in your sports community or in uh, communities to help people fight against different um, diseases or problems. Being a leader is so much more than just you at home or you at school. It can be anywhere, and we can all step up to be leaders and inspire people. So that actually kind of goes with where can you be a leader. You can be a leader anywhere. Just remember, because you're a leader once does not mean you're a leader permanently. Give people time. Being a leader doesn't mean being the one who gets all the glory. So this is what I would like to call the leadership revolution. It's when basically tomorrow we say to ourselves, we're all going to be leaders because everyone should be a leader. We're all going to inspire. We're all going to put, hopefully, what you've learned here to a certain use and lead ourselves into a better future. Thank you very much.